Production funding for Flying Squirrels Insider is made possible in part by the all-new 2015 GMC Yukon, offering professional-grade design and functionality. The all-new 2015 GMC Yukon, now available at Richmond Area GMC dealers. Dan Doherty at Colonial First Mortgage, assisting customers with home purchasing and mortgage refinancing, online at colonial1mtg.com and by phone at 804-218-4444. And James Limousine, driven to serve Richmond for 22 years. JamesLimousine.com, 804-237-1540. On this week's Flying Squirrels Insider, the guys break down the first two weeks of the season on the field for the Flying Squirrels and recap opening weekend at the Diamond. Plus, James Limousine Luxury Player of the Week Tyler Graham visits FSI Field and teaches you how to steal legally. And you go hot tubbing with Eastern League All-Star Jack Snodgrass. It's FSI right now. Greetings and welcome to another installment of Flying Squirrels Insider. I am your host, John Laser, joined by my good friends and cohorts here on the program, Jay Burnham down there to my left and to my immediate left, Wes McElroy. We've got a lot to get to today, but first things first, we have a beautiful GMC Yukon with us over on FSI Field, which we're going to get onto today for the first time on this very young season. And we would like to thank the local Richmond GMC dealers for providing that here today. We start the program here this morning as we sit on the Colonial First Baseball Desk, Colonial First Mortgage Baseball Desk, and we've got a lot to cover, guys, including the start to this season for this team, which was highly touted, highly anticipated. But, Jay, we're going to start offensively here today because they've really captured the headlines and spurred this team to a great start as they sit in first place as we talk here today. How surprising is that to you? Yeah, you think the offense was a little perturbed that all we talked about was the pitching <laughs> on show number one. And this offense has been going, and it starts with some of that we're going to have join us here uh, today in Tyler Graham. But it's been, to use one of your adjectives, Lays, a, a real plucky offense, an offense that's able to battle through at bats. And I think one thing that's really, uh, really been a, a boon for this team and certainly has uh, been uh, helpful for the Squirrels is to be able to hit situationally, to get down in the count, not give up at bats. We even saw it yesterday from Ricky Oropesa down in the count 0-2 fighting off several fastballs and then roping a base at the right field. So that's what this team's going to have to do. They're going to have to battle, and so far they've done just that. Yeah, Tyler Graham is our James Limousine Luxury Player of the Week. He's going to join us on FSI Field and show us how he gets good jumps to steal bases as he leads the Eastern League in that category through about the first two weeks of the season. And Wes, you've gotten a chance to see him this week. What makes him such a dynamic player? Well, you want to talk about first impressions with Tyler Graham. You talk about situational hitting. There's situations to be hitting in. And right now, going into the series with Redding on Monday, you have the Squirrels who are first in the Eastern League with stolen bases. They've got 20. That's eight more than what Redding has right now. They're getting on base. You got Graham with eight stolen bases. Jared Parker's got one. Kelby Tomlinson's got four. They're leading the league. They're getting on base. They're getting runners in scoring position. They're taking these uh, opportunities. And I see it with Tyler Graham in that Altoona series. This is a veteran guy who's been around. He was picking up lapses in the delivery of Altoona and he was taken second he was taken third he's got the speed he's got the quickness and right now I mean they're getting an extra base which is helping this offense. You talk basically right there about base stealing base running instincts and that's exactly why we wanted to have him come in here today to showcase some of those things because you're right there was moments in that Altoona series where he was making the opposition pitchers just look foolish when you take third as easily as he did 
in that series. That's what's going to happen. He gets there quickly. You know what you can do quickly? Text FSI to 44544 as our text to win contest this year. Once again, brought to you by opt for cars and you could win a gift pack of flying squirrel stuff here, courtesy of my good friend Jay Burnham. And speaking of good friends, Jay, you have taken a quick shine to the two hole hitter, at least for the most part in this squirrels order, Matt Duffy. Why is that the case? Yeah, Duffy, this is this is my this is the best because you can throw every cliche at the book uh, and a guy. Let's like do Matt it. Duffy. That's our strong He's suit. a gamer. <laughs> He's <laughs> gritty. A He's a grinder. <laughs> He's, He's a, a ball, ball player. He's a ball yeah, player. Those are all it. the terms you hear when somebody describes Matt Duffy. And this is a guy that you and I, uh, types of, of, of players like this in the past, have rooted for because he's not a top 30 prospect according to the Baseball America. He's a guy that just has been able to succeed at every level he's been at, has played a very good shortstop. I don't know if the the, uh, the scouts feel that he's going to be a shortstop at the major league level. Maybe he profiles more as a second baseman. But regardless, he gives you quality at bats each and every time, has gap power, can go opposite way. We've seen it a couple of times already this season, and he's just been a real treat to watch. I can't believe I'm going to comment on another man's physique, but he's just so small. Is he going to be durable <laughs> enough to play at the major league level? Yeah, I, I, you would assume so. I mean, just from the way he's been able to stay in shape and stay healthy. But you're right, when you see him uh, out and about, he doesn't look like that prototypical uh, ball player. But um, when he stands in that batter's box, he certainly does. Matt Duffy opening the regular season on an 11-game hit streak. Quite an impressive accomplishment, particularly going around the Eastern League for the first time. It's the second go-around, however, for Jarrett Parker, guys, and it is a small sample size. It is not a month. It is not the length of the season, but thus far, the returns on Jarrett Parker have been astonishing. What does he do differently? How does he look different to you guys at the beginning of the season? I think it's just his confidence. Maybe it's that hair. I don't know what it is. <laughs> he looks like John Mayer, and John Mayer should have confidence confidence because he's not struggling with the ladies. But Jared just, he seems to at bats carry himself a little bit different. He just seems to be carrying himself in general different. And I go back last year in the middle of the season, he was telling us about a, just a conversation he had with his mom and his sister, just getting away from baseball, talking things out. But he's had you know, moments with Ken Joyce where it's just been learning. It's just been acclimating yourself. And like anything in life, when you get bogged down, you get bogged down. And it gets, it weighs on your shoulders until you can find a little ray of sunshine. It looks like he just kind of scrapped that all this year. He came in, he, he knows what he knows what he's doing, and yeah, eight strikeouts this year, a little bit too much, but he's getting on base, and Jarrett Parker's biggest quality you see in the outfield is his speed. Without the strikeouts, he gets on base. He's right now at on-base percentage of 400. He, he just looks like he's carrying himself like he belongs and, and he, he knows what he's doing. And it's interesting. You'll see that in a lot of guys coming back through this league for the second time. They figure it out and it's a maturation process. And we're going to continue to discuss that throughout the year here on this program. Of course, Jay, you and I will on our radio broadcast as well. Another thing we're going to highlight, you mentioned interesting right there when you talked about Jared Parker. Turns out he is, in fact, the most interesting ball player in Virginia, and we're about to find that out in just a minute here as well. Hold on for that. And we can't wait any longer. Okay, we talked offense. That's nice, and it has, it really has taken some of the attention thus far this year. But look, all eyes of the baseball world are on this team for a reason. It's the starting pitching staff. Mixed results. Jay, what were your takeaways from the first two starts of the well, year? Well, it's tough to get a read, especially with guys coming out of spring training on limited pitch counts, and rightfully so. That's how these players are treated nowadays, and especially with Alberto Mejia, the 20-year-old, leaving after just one inning, taking a line drive off his lower leg. He appears to be fine. But I think the word that we're going to use, and I think we may have used it on the broadcast once or twice, is composure. We saw Clayton Blackburn in front of a sold-out crowd at the Diamond on opening night. Maybe didn't have the results he wanted, but you can see the ability, the ability to throw strikes, the ability to not get rattled and, and throw his breaking ball specifically for a strike. He said he had a little bit of a hard time uh, commanding his fastball. That certainly will come along. But I think composure is the way that you can kind of uh, uh, describe the first and now we're going with a six man rotation six guys in, in the uh, in the rotation and Kyle Crick of course is the headliner of that group you mentioned some of the others and Wes we saw his second start his first home start and it was a bit frustrating yeah two and two thirds he really labored a lot of walks I think it was 74 pitches walk three and I'll go with what you just said mixed results because here's a guy they went into spring training with working on his fastball command working on his change up positioning and and the fastball is there. I mean, he's clocking in the 90s, but his secondary stuff has been lacking. This is double A. He's getting the call up. He's working on some stuff. It's new batters. I mean, he'll come around, but it's just a matter of right now working things out and figuring things out. 
And good news, bad news, mixed results again on Adalberto Mejia. He looked pretty sturdy actually in his first start of the year, but a setback in terms of stretching him out from a pitch count standpoint as he was struck in the shin by a comebacker and actually only lasted an inning in his second start, his first at the diamond. The good news, however, on that is, is he's fine. It was more of a precaution than anything else. He is scheduled to take his next turn in rotation, so that is certainly a great thing. And the two guys that get lost a little bit at the end of that rotation, Kelvin Marte, Jack Snodgrass, you expect those guys to take their turns in the rotation and Jay it was Marte actually who got the squirrels out of a tight spot created by that short outing for Mejia. Yes yeah, savior for Marte and this is a lefty and again a guy that's not really as highly rated as, as the others before him they actually utilized him a little bit longer than you might because of the situation where the bullpen had been taxed the previous two days because Kyle Crick was removed from the game early because Mejia was removed you go into that game with Marte making his diamond debut and they needed innings and they got him from Marte he was able to throw strikes. He mixed in his breaking ball pretty well. You knew you were going to have Jack Snodgrass the next day. Snodgrass also on a limited pitch count for a different reason, but uh, he really stood up and he really shined, and, and I think it should be interesting to see him going forward. He's going to succeed at this level. I don't know beyond here. I think Kelvin Marte looked around the dugout and saw that he could look and said, I got this, guys. And I wish just one time you would look across the broadcast booth and go, looks like Lays needs some innings from me here tonight. Let me carry this thing. And just not one time no, over sorry. the course of the first two <laughs> years together. Maybe later I kid, of close, of course. But, Wes, let's draw this, this segment to a close here, talking briefly about the bullpen. Again, it's been mixed results down there. Some have been astonishingly positive. However, we heard a ton about Derek Law in spring training coming from the manager of the Giants himself, Bruce Bochy, and he might have understood sold it. This guy is sick. I'll let you have Derek Law. Okay. Let me talk about uh, Josh Osich because Osich right now, here's a guy that we, another guy we talked about where he looks like he's got a lot going on upstairs and we all know in baseball when it gets to upstairs it gets to here. He's working some stuff out right now and he'll come around. This is all part of the learning process but right now he looks like he's far way too, and you guys know this a little bit better in talking to him, looks like he's really into his head. Yeah, and they're going to need Osage, and, and hopefully he's, he's going to be okay. But maybe the guy, other guys like Cody Hall, who's, who started to come around a little bit, and Derek Law, who you just mentioned, uh, will help him out. And I'm a little upset at the Giants because they should have had <laughs> Derek Law here uh, at some point last season. We're starting to see him, and he's probably going to be one of the best relievers while he's in this league. We saw the other night 96 coming in to finish a ball game, and we also finished the segment talking about Derek Law. It might not be too long of a stint here at the AA Eastern League. We were just talking about Jack Snodgrass before he made his second start of the year. He got started and allowing you to get to know some of these younger hurlers. Later on today on FSI, we'll go inside the hot tub. Don't worry, it's not like that with Jack Snodgrass and Clayton Blackburn as Clayton, a willing participant for the first installment of Snodgrass in the hot tub, which is what I'm very <laughs> excited about going forward here today. Also excited to welcome in our James Limousine Luxury Player of the Week. That is Tyler Graham. He joins us a little bit later. And another reminder, text FSI to 44544, and you could be the recipient of that Flying Squirrels gift pack. This is Flying Squirrels Insider. Much, much more still to come. Jared Parker. He once threw an umpire out of a game. The umpire later thanked him by buying him dinner. John Mayer signs his autograph, Jared Parker. Jared was intentionally walked while on the disabled list, twice. Not all squirrels come from Virginia, but this one does. Stay squarely, my friends. Blackbirds. 
So, Mr. Blackburn, it says here you are the Giants' number two prospect. Number two. Yes. That's pretty cool. Um, is there any reason why you weren't number one? You've had two double A stars, correct? Yes. In your first one. Yes. How many hits did you give up? Uh, it was five. 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 That's, uh, that's pretty interesting because, as you all well remember, my first start, no hits. We all know how important the mental side of baseball is, so I have a, I have a little trivia question for you. Right. Can you name the 11th president of the United States? No, that's not really relevant at all. Not relevant? No. Well, James K. Polk would argue differently. Mm -hmm. James K. Polk. I've heard lots and lots about you, but I want to hear straight from, uh, straight from your mouth what, uh, what you do better than everyone else apparently. Well, you know, I get hitters out right in the count, you know, sink it down, down the zone, and, uh, you know, makes my off speed up for strike whenever I want to. So, yeah, that's kind of how I get hitters out, but it's good work. Yeah. All right, well, that sounds good, man. Well, my final question is, you're a, uh, since you're a single guy. Yeah. Single guy. Wow. Richmond has tons and abundance of wonderful, wonderful women. Yeah. Why don't you, uh, why don't you make the pitch? Make the pitch to the uh, women folk of Richmond. Tell them why you're such an eligible bachelor. I um, mean, you know, I'm just tall, you know, I play baseball. I play baseball in Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I don't know, you know, blue That's eyes. enough. All right, we've heard enough. Why are you being such a jerk? Oh, um, it's my TV show. I do what I want. Down this. Ball one. Great command. What a prospect. Anyway, that wraps us up for the hot tub side grassing, the first one of 2014. Tune in next time. Welcome back to Flying Squirrels Insider as we move from the Colonial First Mortgage Baseball Desk right here to FSI Field for the first time this year. And we are thrilled to be joined by Flying Squirrels center fielder Tyler Graham. And Grammer, welcome. Thanks for taking the time. This is really special for us because you and I were just talking. We've got the backdrop of AT&T Park behind us. You're the first player we've had here that's actually played there. And I want to get to that in just a second. But first, you're off to a great start this year. How have you been feeling? I feel great. Um, last year going into the season, I didn't get it prepared too well um, with the injury and uh, all the rehab. And this year I got a full season, a full off season of, of training and, and doing all the stuff I need to do to get to get ready and uh, to uh, prepare myself for a successful season. So it's, it's nice to be off to a, to a great start. And uh, this is a long season, so uh, the season's about consistency and keeping it up. And uh, it's always fun to get off to a good start, though. Little backstory for our viewers. You were an original squirrel, but you were only here for a couple of weeks and you went up to Fresno, had the season of your life. You've been through somewhat of an odyssey since then, including playing there in San Francisco while with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Just fill us in a little bit about where you've been, what you've been through and where you're at now. Yeah, after that, after that season, uh, um, the breakout year that I had in 2000, I think 10, um, I went back in 2011 to Fresno and uh, had another good season. Um, went to winter ball in Mexico and, and found out I got put on the 40 man with the, with the Giants. And so that, so obviously that was a pretty exciting moment for me. Um, and then I get to the season uh, that next year in 2012 and and uh, feeling great. Um, the body felt great. Uh, had a lot of confidence going into that season. And uh, the fifth game of the season, I ended up breaking my shoulder and uh, missing almost the whole season. And that was, uh, you know, very frustrating with all the hard work I'd put in, as, as all of us baseball players do to to uh, get to the point where we are, um, there's a lot of lot of stuff that goes into it, and a lot of a lot of hard work, and and to have another uh, devastating injury was was tough. But uh, I think those kind of things only make you stronger, and uh, they're great learning experiences for uh, the future. And uh, that's it's brought me here today, um, the path I guess it's brought <laughs> me here um, through that injury. Uh, I spent a year in indie ball. Uh, and in Mexico, and obviously that was a great experience. Not where you exactly want to be, but it's something that I had to go through to get back to where I wanted to be, and that's and that's right here right now. And I'm very excited to be here. When guys say they've spent a year in Mexico, they're not at all-inclusive resorts in Puerto Vallarta. That's what he says by not exactly where you want to be. But you just mentioned there, didn't get the opportunity to go into the season strong. Mm -hmm. You have gotten that opportunity this year. Mm -hmm. It's back here in Richmond, where again, you have not been since 2010. But it really seems like you revel in that role of being the igniter for this offense. You play with a ton of energy, a ton of speed. How fun is it playing with a, a very young group of guys right now? 
It's great. Um, I got a chance to play with most of these guys in spring training and get to know them a lot. Uh, obviously, they were a lot younger than I was when, when I was with the Giants and, and didn't get to know a lot of them when I was here before. So uh, the month I got to spend with all of them in spring training uh, was time that I got to know each and every one of them and, and kind of see what they were about as, as far as people and as ball players. And um, I found that we had a great group of guys. Uh, it's probably uh, one of the best teams that I've played on as far as a group of guys. Uh, as a collective group, and, and, and that always makes it fun to go to the ballpark every day. I haven't had that in my career where it's, where it's a blast to go to the field every day. It's always a blast when you start the game, and, and it's always very enjoyable and fun uh, in that competition of the game. But as far as all the other stuff before the game and hanging out with the guys, it hasn't been as fun as it has been this year. And, and uh, I'm very excited to go to the field every day this year, and it, it's been a blast. Tyler Graham is with us. He's usually leading things off for the Flying Squirrels, but he's going to close the show with us, and he's going to show you how to steal bases legally. He had 60 of them a few years ago, and he's off to a great start leading the circuit in that category right now as well. We kick these chairs out. We get on the base pass with Tyler Graham as FSI continues right after this. excited about this as we're getting on to FSI field for the first time. Tyler Graham, nice enough to join us, Flying Squirrels center fielder, and he is going to teach you the art of stealing and getting away with it, which is a good lesson for you younger viewers here, of course. And to help us out also, right-hander Wes McElroy, left-hander Jay Burnham. I think it goes without saying they're unremarkable in terms of their ability to pitch, but they're very talented on this show, and they're going to help us out. And we started with the right-hander grammar because there's not a whole lot that goes into what you're looking for. As you were mentioning to me, it's actually more about times than it is about the view that you're getting from the pitcher. It is. It all starts off with uh, the coach in the dugout with his with the stopwatch or the first base coach with the stopwatch. And uh, like we were talking about, if they're a one three or higher, um, we're going to take off and go. And uh, if they're if they're going to do a slide step, then it, which means uh, if they just take and, and go and go quick, we're always going to shut it down. But if they're their normal uh, pickup and delivery and they're a one three or higher, um, we're going to take off to second base. 1.3 seconds to further elaborate for those of people that aren't familiar with that terminology is what he means. And, you know, you talk about it in sprinting sometimes, and that's basically what it is. But a 1.3 to a 1.6, well, how big of a difference are just those three-tenths of a second to you? It's huge. If, uh, if a guy's a 1.6, it's pretty much a guaranteed stolen base if you get just a decent jump, uh, uh, regardless of how good the catcher's arm is. So, yeah, the pitcher... Uh, the pitcher's a big deal of, of how fast uh, he gets rid of the ball is, uh, is basically determines whether we're safe or out. There are a couple of physical things, though, that you have to keep an eye on. What are those with the right-handed pitcher? With the right-handed pitcher, we're looking at that, usually that front heel most of the time. Uh, we're just going to look, we're just looking for that front heel to lift up, and once that lifts up, we're taking off. And uh, if he picks over, we're, if we're looking at that front heel and he's going to pick over, our peripheral vision kind of takes over and, and it sees that back foot pick up and come and, and we're going to head back to first base. Well, let's assume that Wes McElroy just threw a pitch and got hit out of the park, so we're going to have to go to the bullpen for the southpaw. Thank you, Wes, as Jay Burnham will now come on. And he is a natural left-hander, so this should be a smooth process here. But why does it become more difficult with the left-handed pitcher as opposed to the right-hander? It's, it's a lot different with the lefty because uh, a lefty can, uh, can pick up and they can be a read guy, which makes it real tough to steal. Um, so when we get a read guy, we're, we're most, most likely going to go first move, regardless if he's a 1-2, one, 1-3, one, uh, one, one, it doesn't really matter. We're going to just go first move. Otherwise, if he's not a read guy, that means his, his, his foot is uh, coming across his back leg. And uh, once that happens, uh, we can take off. So usually um, the key to a lefty Instead of looking at anything else, you're looking for that you're looking for that front foot to cross that back leg 
And uh, once, that, once that happens, he has to go to home plate, and we take off to second. Well, Jay, let's see. Let's try to see if we can fool Tyler Graham. I think I know how this is going to end up here, but we'll do it nonetheless anyway. So here he comes. He's coming to the set position. And, yep, getting back here on time over there. Now, Jay, real quick, one more time, actually go to the plate this time, and we'll see when the break is. There it is, right as that first move, as Tyler Graham just told us here. Unfortunately, we're done moving on FSI Field already here today because we are out of time. Grammar, thanks for coming out here. Thank it's you. an extremely busy time of the year for the Flying Squirrels, but they are off to a phenomenal start, including Tyler Graham at the top of that offense. We had a lot of things going on today. We hope you enjoyed them all. I thank, in a blanket fashion, all of our participants for Flying Squirrels Insider here today. For all of them, I'm John Lazer saying thanks for joining us one more time. We're back again, and be sure to return with us to FSI Field, the Colonial First Mortgage Baseball Desk, and of course, to the Diamond. For everybody, so long from Fly Schools Insider. Production funding for Flying Squirrels Insider is made possible in part by the all-new 2015 GMC Yukon, offering professional-grade design and functionality. The all-new 2015 GMC Yukon, now available at Richmond Area GMC dealers. Dan Doherty at Colonial First Mortgage, assisting customers with home purchasing and mortgage refinancing, online at colonial1mtg.com and by phone at 804-218-4444. And James Limousine, driven to serve Richmond for 22 years. JamesLimousine.com, 804-237-1540.